This week we find ourselves back on the road and about to attempt our most epic drive on our trip so far. Our story continues back on the Pan American Highway, where we were once again appalled by the sheer volume of roadside pollution. We had been pre-warned about the trash situation in Peru, but seeing it firsthand was heartbreaking. As we made our way further south, the landscape around us opened up and we were greeted by our familiar friend, the Andes Mountains. Hello and welcome back. I'm not going to lie, the last five months or so have been some of the hardest months I've ever had to deal with. If you follow our account on Facebook, you'll know I'm pretty open about the ups and downs of the trip and how we're doing. And if I'm honest, it's, I, I've really struggled the past month or so, the failures of the garage and what we didn't get complete stress of leaving Ecuador and then trying to deal with all of the final bits to get Ruby ready has been tough. Also pushing ourselves to make some additional income because we're really struggling financially at the moment. We never planned to drive to the end of South America and so we didn't really have the income to support ourselves so we have tried multiple things to bring in some extra funds, writing a book, selling merchandise, really pushed hard to get the YouTube channel monetized and they brought in little bits, but it's never really been enough. So we felt that quite, quite a lot. However, as you can see behind me, we are in a new spot. We finally left and already we're both feeling a little bit happier. Ruby's driving well. There's still one or two bits we haven't got finished, but we haven't got much time here already. So we're just gonna deal with it as we go along. And we are about to attempt to do probably what I think is going to be one of the most epic drives we've done on the trip so far. And we're both a little bit excited about that and we can't wait to get going. How good did it feel to camp somewhere new? Pretty good. And free. And free sleeping to the sound of the waves and then being woken up to cats trying to escape out of the window. Yeah, Amy mauled me. And now but, she's trying to be cute about it. Now she's like, Mommy, rub off. my belly, Mommy, I love you. I said just now, I think this is going to be the most epic trip we've done so far. What do you reckon? What, whereas? Up, up into the Laguna. Some uh, mountains coming. You reckon Ruby's ready? And she'll ever be, I guess. Are you ready? I'm just hoping we deal with the altitude because it's a bit of a crazy drive. Especially as we're starting here. We're not going to say too much just yet. We'll fill you guys in more along the way. With not much time left on our visa, we soon found ourselves back on the road again. Time to top up the air shock, seeing as we broke a cable, and this time we're going to show it. All right, here we go. Okay. Oh, it's moving. Well, it's rubble it's everywhere. Really weird. It's all like abandoned. It's all half finished and it's all just covered in rubble. It's literally like, I feel like I'm driving in the apocalypse. 
What a pretty place. Kind of a bit of a, an odd combination. Lovely beachfront. This is so gross. You missed the part where you threw the dead bird over the wall so that we could actually park here. Just everywhere. It's just gross, isn't it? Peru, sort your shit out, man. It's I'm not quite sure what it is. I think it may be a dolphin. There's dead animals all down the beach here. I've read some people say that it's a specific type of bird flu which is killing all the animals, all, all of the birds specifically. And then there's been one or two people saying, is it all of the oil rigs and the pollution from the trash that's killing all the animals? I'm like, I'm not sure. It's really sad though. Horrible to see. I'm not sure you'll see it, but other than the trash, We've got a lovely background of sand dunes and then a mountain in the background, which is kind of cool. First thing we like to do when we arrive at a new camping spot is apparently go and cover all the dead birds up that we found on the beach because it absolutely stinks. There he is, dead bird shoveling. I think he's done like 10 already. I uh, must admit though, it does smell a little bit less horrific. So I guess it is worth, <laughs> worth doing. And also you don't get the floor demon trying to eat some rotting carcass. What do you think, Bean? You're not impressed? Not amused? With the birds covered, I spent the rest of the night trying to burn off as much of the trash as possible. I always knew my love of fires would one day save the world. So which breakdown would you like to hear about first today? We are currently in a car park for a plaza because will I noticed that the rear brake was leaking. She's just trying to check to see what the problem is. So problem number one, not something you want when you're about to drive some of the really steep mountain dirt roads. Kind of want your brakes for that. Um, the bigger problem, that isn't even the biggest problem, is that she's noticed oil coming out between the gearbox and the engine. Now that means that either the seal in the back of the gearbox or the back of the engine has failed. And the only way to get to either of those would be to take the engine out. I'm just so, so, so done with all of these problems. Just beyond caring now. Just why not? Why not go to another garage and take the engine out? New month. Oof. Can't, found can't. found a shop to swap the tube out at least. Hopefully, I mean he says he can, but then they always he say never that. Yeah, they always say that. We're they doing it ourselves though, rather than going to an actual brake garage. Because I don't trust anybody. This is all because. We had a problem with our brake line in Colombia and we took it to a brake specialist who made us a new tube, but they had this weird fucking connector and they just put like a plug in the end to try and make it work. And clearly, it's a bag of shite. So, hopefully this shop does an actual brake tube that works and fits without problem and does the one thing it's supposed to do in this world. I'm not holding my breath though, I'm really not.
So it turns out they don't actually do the connection here. They're just going to put some PTFE tape around it and shove it back in apparently. It's just people don't understand like we're starting to get to the end of our tether with things because just so many bad mechanics and shops and they do things so bad and after months and months of it you kind of like you get fed up. It's not complicated. They've got one flaring tool and they're just flaring the wrong end on and then I was like well what are you doing? And they're like oh just put PTFE tape inside it. So that's going to be our bodged up break to take us down the mountain road. Anyway, I think it's a load of crap. And then the other problem with being an overlander is that if it doesn't work, you can't just drive back like a thousand kilometers and be like, hey man, this is broke. Can you, can you swap it? You just, that's it. It's a joke. The brakes are sorted. We are on our way out of Trujillo. people it's not pennies it's a lot of money like we said if you you know make two bad decisions you go to a bad expensive cash point and you fill up an expensive fuel station you just spend 20 quid that you didn't need to spend that's almost two days of budget insane things we learn about peru back on the road once again and the andes mountains seem to grow out of the landscape around us Not since our time in the US had we driven such long and winding highways. And then just as the sun was beginning to set, we joined a dirt road which would take us into our canyon drive. This road has been beautiful to drive and you can see a couple of months ago when they had a really bad hurricane hit, this road has just got completely washed away in places. Make sure you go in the right lane. <laughs> We made it 
it to our first camp spot. It's our base camp. From here, we're gonna slowly start acclimatizing ourselves because in Mexico, we went from sea level to about 4,000 feet and it wasn't pleasant. So, taking our time, we're not sure how the cats will manage with it as well, so we wanna be wary of them. It was an awesome drive in the sunset down the canyon. Got some amazing views. Can't really see much now, but the moon's up behind me. We're next to the river. We're gonna fall asleep next to the sound of the river. I don't think the road's gonna be busy soon. And yeah, we're getting closer to our goal. Now all the fun stuff's gonna start happening. Next morning, stuff did happen, but it's not what we would describe as fun. Good morning. So instead of being able to enjoy our morning in the canyon, we've been trying to fix some of the problems. Firstly, this pipe. I'm not sure you can see, I'll try and show you on the camera a bit better. Tore it again. So we lost all of the air at the back suspension. We swapped it, but we cut it off pushed it further along and reattached it and we just got the side pumping air in and our air compressor is broken. Managed to get about 75 psi when we've been running over 100 in them so it's better than nothing but it's just another one, another silly problem really. Uh, Ruby's really losing oil. It just sucks man. I just feel like this is still knock-on effect from Ecuador if we'd got everything done in the time we needed to we would have had more time to fix this ages ago and enjoy all of the things we wanted to in Peru but I feel like we're just going to spend most of our time in Peru fixing problems and then getting out we've got to make sure Ruby is road ready for Willow's parents who have booked their tickets now so ah oh, sucks absolutely sucks with the airline fixed, we were finally ready to drive the epic Canyon del Pato. Absolutely stunning drive and we're trying so hard to not let the problems distract us from enjoying it because so very often you get to drive a route like this. I mean the mountains they just make you feel like you're on a different planet. The colours, it's almost Mars -esque. It's freaking awesome. Sometimes. Sometimes the road is not good. Haven't broken our air shocks again so far today, so it started okay. Although the canyon road was passable, there were still signs of the recent hurricane which had destroyed so much of it. We are about to go through the first of many tunnels on Canyon del Panyon. We are about to go through the first tunnel on Canyon del Pato. Absolutely excited, man. Even with all the problems, how can you not enjoy this?
What makes Canyon del Pato so epic is that all along the road, tunnels have been carved out of the mountains for you to drive through. I'm gonna say it, this is probably the most fun I've ever had on a drive, and it's the most beautiful drive as well. What do you reckon? It is first time in ages we were back on the road properly and enjoying every moment of it. It's really not good quality video but that my friends is a glacier. River crossing! Absolutely breathtaking views in front of me. It just makes the trip worthwhile. You have all the bad moments and then you get something like this and then you remember why you want to do it in the first place. So weird living in a town like this, kind of isolated in the canyon. Different way of life up here. Everyone's always so friendly as well, whistling and waving at Ruby. She's a star today. You're enjoying the view there, darling. Both the views. <laughs> <laughs> I am enjoying the nice view of the canyon and you. I am watching a live football match back in England, Man United versus Man City, on the BBC, playing flawlessly, thanks to... Oh man, I love Starlink, because you can have the internet out here. How's this feel? After two months living in a garage and another two weeks basically living on a paid campground. I love deserts. It's not a desert, but like, I like... Barren wasteland. Barren wasteland wilderness and nothing there and no people and no things. And a fire. It's just the van and the fire and the river. And the cats are happy. It's good to be back on the road then, feeling a little bit... You ready for fire feast? Oh, we love me fire feast. Just us two alone in the canyon, it felt great to be back in the wild and reconnecting with nature after spending so much time in the garage. We woke the next morning feeling refreshed after the most relaxing sleep we'd had in forever. We decided to send Steve up to capture some footage of the stunning scenery around us.
people. So my presence in their shop is like panic stations and they all freak out and run away and try and get like the next person who's older in the family to come and serve me. So that's fun. But uh, I have successfully bought a cola flavoured beverage. After another long drive, we made it to our final base camp at the foot of Laguna Peron. In the morning, we would have one final drive to make it up to the Laguna. Welcome to base camp for the night. We are at 2,600 meters for the first time in a very long time. Long sleeves. It is a bit chilly. It's not as cold as it's gonna get, as you can probably see from the large amount of snow. But we have this free camp spot. What an amazing view to have for free. And then tomorrow, we're going up there. So that means a night here with the heating on and the duvet and the cats in the bed and trying to acclimatize because I can feel the altitude. I know you can't, but um, I'm on cups of tea already. So we're going to have a nice, fairly quiet night. Try hopefully. and get some sleep because hopefully tomorrow sleep. we've got to try and drive to a glacier laguna and it's going to be a bit of a rough drive on Rubes. It is, and it's a lot of altitude game. Another Almost going to double. Yes, up to 4,200 meters is where we're going, and I'm definitely not going to sleep up there. But hopefully, here is a good uh, stop in the middle. Yeah, so we'll see you guys in the morning. <laughs> 